Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Corvette C4. I hope you enjoy it. In public school around grade 4, my previous kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Noble, that taught the morning class, bought a brand new 1984 Nissan 300ZX. At the time, I thought she was pretty lame. Mr. Dixon, the afternoon kindergarten teacher, on the other hand, was much cooler. He bought an actual brand new 1984 Corvette. My father was a chemical engineer, and he designed the windshield washer bottle, air conditioning vents, and seatbelt covers for the 84 Corvette. I used to brag to my friends about this, although they were unimpressed as these parts were pretty mundane. I don't think my father really cared for the project either. They basically worked 24 hours a day for months as not to miss the 1983 launch of the car that never actually happened. That's right, there is no 1983 Corvette model year. 61 83 Corvettes were built, 43 were pilot cars, and 18 prototypes. The 43 pilot line cars that were built were never released to the public. The cars were used for automotive press reviews, engineering evaluations, and crash testing. After these tests, these vehicles were destroyed except one, which is in the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The only 1983 Corvette thankfully survived the sinkhole that swallowed eight Corvettes in the museum in 2014. Wait, what was that? Could it be? Another jackalope? Holy crap! Run. As a child, I had a slot car Corvette, I had a few Hot Wheels Corvettes. I even drove a Corvette on the mountain roads in the video game test drive. I had the Get Vet poster on my wall. My mother made me this cool ceramic Corvette piggy bank. The C4 Corvette played a starring role in my favorite TV show, The A-Team. The C4 also appeared in my favorite Cannonball Run movie series. It was also featured in countless B-car movies. The C4 was so badass, even Chuck Norris had one. Wow, retractable swords and a ninja star launcher. The C4 was also in touch with its feminine side, being the ride of choice for Barbie and possibly your sister. Corvette C4 was designed by Dave McClellan and his Corvette team. The C4 was a clean sheet of paper design that had many interesting technological advancements. The suspension was independent and made of lightweight aluminum, as were the wheels. The brakes even had aluminum calipers. The C4 did not have steel coil springs and leaf springs like a conventional car. It had composite transverse leaf springs both front and rear. The first manual transmission option was the Doug Nash 4 plus 3 transmission and it was unusual too. I really did not understand it until I researched this project. It is a Super T10 4-speed manual transmission with an electric overdrive unit bolted to the end of it. How it works is very misunderstood due to the fact it actually changed functionality yearly. The basic idea is that automatic mode under light loads it goes into overdrive in 2nd, 3rd, and 4th gear to save fuel. The transmission therefore has 4 speeds plus 3 overdrives. From 85 to 88 it technically has 8 gears because you can manually switch the overdrive on in all 4 gears. Many C4 owners suggest manual mode. 1st gear clutch, 2nd gear clutch, 3rd gear clutch, fourth gear clutch, engage the overdrive as fifth. If you're really interested in inducing a 4 plus 3 migraine, I included this chart. In 1989, the Corvette got a conventional 6-speed ZF manual transmission, or for my American friends, ZF manual transmission. 
The automatic 4-speed transmission used in the C Corvette was called a 700R4. The 700R4 was renamed 4L60 in 1990 and became the 4L60E in 1993. The E stands for Electronically Controlled. The 1984 Corvette used the Crossfire injected L83 350 engine. Two GM throttle bodies sat on top of a Crossram intake. The Crossfire made 205 horsepower and 290 foot-pounds of torque. The 1985 to 1991 Corvette used the L98 350 tuned port fuel-injected TPI engine. The engine had 230 horsepower for 1985 and 1986, 240 horsepower for 1987 and 1989, 245 horsepower with 3.08 to 1 rear axle ratio, 88 and 89 only, and 245 horsepower in 1990 and 1991, or 250 horsepower with a 3.08 to 1 rear axle ratio. The 1992-1996 Corvette used the LT1 engine. The LT1 used a reverse flow cooling system which cooled the cylinder heads first, maintaining lower combustion chamber temperatures and allowing the engine to run at a higher compression than the L83 and the L98. Between 1992 and 1996, the LT1 had 300 horsepower and 330 foot-pounds of torque. 1996 LT1s were rated at 300 horsepower and 340 foot-pounds of torque. The LT4 was introduced in 1996 and came standard on all manual transmission C4 Corvettes. The LT4 was a high-performance variant of the LT1 that had lumpier camshafts, 1.6 to 1 aluminum roller rocker arms, lighter hollow intake valves, and liquid sodium-filled exhaust valves, larger injectors, a performance crankshaft, higher 10.8 to 1 compression ratio, and a red-painted high-flow intake manifold. The LT4 was underrated at 330 horsepower and 340 foot-pounds of torque. The general consensus was the LT4 had up to 350 horsepower at the crank based on independent dyno results. The two rear ends available in the C4 Corvette were the Dana 36 and the Dana 44. The Dana 36 had a 7-inch ring gear and the much stronger Dana 44 had an 8.5-inch ring gear. In 1984, all vets had the Dana 36. Starting in 1985, all standard transmission Corvettes got the Dana 44, and most automatic Corvettes had the Dana 36. The 1984-1989 Corvette C4 came with a digital liquid crystal display instrument cluster. It displayed a combination of graphics for speed and RPM, fuel level, and used digital displays for other engine functions. Many people dislike it. These people are what I refer to as wrong. The 1990-1996 Corvette got a dash restyle that those same people that were wrong about the 84-89 dash preferred. This picture illustrates the wheel designs over the years. 84-88 Corvettes had 16-inch wheels. The 1988 16-inch base wheel could be optioned to the 89-90 style 17-inch wheel also. All 89-96 Corvettes came standard with 17-inch wheels. The 16-inch tires were huge. 255-50-16. The 17-inch tires were gigantic, 255-40-17, 275-40-17, or 285-40-17 depending on the year and the options. Before this video I knew Corvette C4 styling changed over the years, but I was not exactly sure what changed. Maroc Corvette specializes in C4s and their videos uncovered all the mysteries. The C4s didn't change that much actually, the panel behind the front wheel changed. The 1991 got a substantial facelift back and front, and 96 changed ever so slightly at the front. Corvette C4 is rolling down the production line. I bet all the cool kids will LS swap these in the future. This is the way we weld the Corvettes early in the morning. The long-awaited 1984 Corvettes hit the dealer showrooms in March of 1983. The base price was $21,800. Corvette marketing was very bold. Corvette beat them in maximum lateral acceleration. Corvette beat them in the slalom. And on the road course, Corvette beat them to the finish. The most advanced production car on the planet is now called Corvette. Chevrolet is taking charge. C4 Corvettes were a big deal and they were used to market just about everything. In 1980s marketing, Corvette and modern were interchangeable terms. The only difference between these 84 Corvettes is the gasoline they're using. 
This one accelerates faster with Amico Premium Lead Free. It's the highest octane lead free you can buy. The Corvette C4 was the second highest selling Corvette generation in history. 1984 was the best selling C4 Corvette, likely due to the 17 month production run and the absence of the 1983 model year. The 1984 Corvette does not seem that quick by today's standards, but it was capable of 140 mile an hour top speeds, 0 to 60 times in under 7 seconds, and 15.2 second quarter mile times at 90 miles an hour. The Corvette was actually one of the fastest cars in the world at the time. As the years went by, the C4 did get quicker and faster. Here's a clip from Motor Week 1989. For a quarter mile time of 14.3 seconds and a final speed of 97. Zero to 60 in our car took 6.1 seconds. While that's the same as before, getting there is less work and more fun. Modifying the C4 Corvette is almost too easy as the small block Chevy engine has the largest aftermarket support in the world. Wow, that modified C4 just took that poor Mustang to Gapplebee's. The Corvette C4 makes an excellent race car and it has been raced in practically every form of auto racing, including its own race series, the Corvette Challenge. Cunningham passes Buck and there it goes. Robin Buck drops a position and Carradine all over Wallaka Chuck into corner eight. Outside, inside, Jim. Will he take it? He is trying everything that he can possibly do. He certainly is not going to let that race leader get away. Buying a C4 Corvette. 1984 to 1990 cars have an average value of $6,100 to $9,000. In 1984, the C4 had the Crossfire LAD3, which did have its share of reliability issues. 1985 is the first year of the L98 230 horsepower engine. The Z51 handling package usually adds $500 to the cost of a C4 Corvette. Manual transmission cars are rarer than automatics, adding a 10% premium. The convertible arrived in 1986 and a good one goes for about $7,600 compared to $6,200 for a coupe. 1986 also got standard ABS brakes. In 1987, the power is up to 240 horsepower with the use of roller lifters. The 1989 models got the ZF 6-speed manual transmission, which are generally considered less problematic and sportier to drive than the Doug Nash 4 Plus 3. The instruments were no longer 100% digital. The new gauges were analog, but they had a large LCD display in the center of the panel that displayed speed and other important readings in digital. The L98's power was boosted to 245 horsepower, but 1990 examples are still very affordable at $7,200 for your average coupe and prices around $9,000 for convertibles. 1991 to 96 average values between $7,200 and $11,400. In 1991, the Chevrolet C4 Corvette got an exterior refresh with smoothed over corners and side vents, new square shaped taillights similar to the 1990s ZR1, redesigned wheels, an embossed Corvette name on the rear panel rather than an emblem. The 1992 got the new LT1 engine, output was 300 horsepower. In 1993, a 40th anniversary edition arrived with ruby red paint. The 40th anniversary edition adds about $3,000 to the price on a coupe and $4,000 to the price of a convertible. In 1995, the VET got softer front springs, and Z07 equipment packages became available. Bigger front brakes from the ZR1 became standard equipment. 1996 was the last year of C4. Six-speed manual equipped cars got the LT4 5.7 liter engine with 330 horsepower standard. There is a collector's edition model with silver paint, special badges, and special five-spoke wheels. Collector's edition versions today are worth an extra $3,000 if you can find one. Experts seem to be torn on the collectability and the potential increase in value of C4 Corvettes. Many believe too many of them were made and too many of them still exist. Many of them were summer toys that were garage kept and of course being fiberglass they never rusted away. Oddly, Fox Body Mustangs and 3rd Gen Camaro Firebird prices are on the rise, while C4 Corvettes have not changed. It is safe to say C4 Corvettes are sub $10,000 supercars and it might be a good idea to get one now, because who really knows what's going to happen later. Thank you for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I hope you enjoyed my story of the Corvette C4. Please remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know when my next video comes out.